working with those symmetries and putting those in place. I also recolored them so they wouldn't all be green. And I just did them by twos um, in kind of a slightly arbitrary order, but by twos so that on either side, um, the symmet symmetrical spline would match up with the one uh, that was originally created for it. So that's kind of helpful in that regard. So what I want to do now is kind of start coming through here and uh, creating an animation for those headphones. So let's twirl up our head control for those splines on the head for a moment and work with the headphones. Now, I'm going to add the mint tag for the headphones so the whole thing can be mint. We haven't used maybe enough mint in this and I like that color. So we've got the mint on there and now kind of coming through here, what I want to do is if I open up the headphones, you'll see we've got some individual pieces here. So I don't want to be in point mode anymore. I'm going to go into model mode and let's just start kind of playing around with these. So the first one we have is the head piece. That's kind of this piece right here. So I'm just going to undo that movement really quickly. And I just want this to come in just kind of straight down from above. And I want all of these to kind of just come in from left, right, up, down, and come into place right here. So let's figure out w at what point do we want those headphones to be completely assembled and we need to set a keyframe for their coordinates right there. So probably right in this area here would be a good place for that to happen. Um, looks like about 450 is about where I'm feeling that. So we'll come in here for headpiece, set a keyframe, attach right, set a keyframe. And all of these pieces that you can see there are going to be pieces that will be moving. So you'll just want to go ahead and set a keyframe for those um, on each each one on 450 for now. Some of them will probably offset in a minute, but we want the keyframe set in place so that we can scrub backwards a little bit and start to move those out of the way. So let's say this screw three kind of goes way off over here and um, we'll go ahead and set another keyframe for it. Let's go, let's have that start coming in like right in there. So move it over, set a key. And then screw two, we can't really see at this point, so I'll come over here a little bit further. And let's pull this one off in this direction set the key and then we'll grab it and let's pull it back over here around 350. So there, those look like they're coming in kind of right at the same speed. So um, we'll fix that in a moment because that doesn't really look awesome. Um, so let's come back in here right around there. Metal connection. Let's have that come in from the side as well. So we'll move this one in the Z axis just like that. And we'll go ahead and set a key there. We'll do the speaker plastic. Let's have this one come in from the bottom. So I'm going to go back a little bit further, have that one happen a little bit longer, pull that down, set a key. Nice. So that's kind of what we're getting here. Pull this back a bit more. We've got that attach left. Um, for this one, let's go in the Z over this direction, set a key attach right. Let's have that one come in from the right side. Set a key. And then the headpiece probably should have that come from top to bottom. So we'll pull that up and set a key. Okay, so it doesn't matter so much where these pieces are coming from um, and at what point they come in, but it does matter if they all get there at the same time because that looks strange. So um, let's get definitely this screw three and we'll grab its keyframe and pull it out a little bit just like that. So it happens a little bit later. And then also another thing you can do to offset them is let's right click our screw three and you can't see this on yours, but a few options from the bottom you're going to see show F curves. I'll give you a second to find that. It's right above show motions which is above object information which is a couple above help. Okay so grab show F curves and then 
uh, this is going to be the one we want to deal with right here. So this is where the mo the most of the movement is for this. So if I um, come in here and I grab this handle and I hold control, then I can't move it up or down. But if I pull it backwards, what's going to happen is I can't move it up or down. So I'm not changing really um, the interpolation of that going above the line, but I am changing the interpolation of the speed at which it comes in and I'm only changing that by holding control so what will happen is it will quickly accelerate from its point um, here maybe not it's not gonna be going at top speed because this line is a little bit sh uh, flat here then it's gonna go really really fast and then slowly ease in as this line kind of plateaus and flattens out it's slowly coming in to its destination at the headphones so now if we X out of this and I scrub forward, you can see it gets slower and slower and slower and then arrives. And you can do that with a few different pieces. Maybe you want to try that with the headpiece too. So come in here at 450, right click, go to show F curves, and that one's going to be this one with most of the movement here. So you'll hold control, pull that back. And now I scrub forward. You can see it just, it gets there faster than the other pieces, but it slows down as it comes into its final position. So you may want to add that to a few of your other pieces. Now one of the things that we're counteracting here by changing that is twinning. And somewhere where we're having lots and lots of horrible, horrible twinning is on our head. Our sweeps are all happening at exactly the same time. So let's go ahead and fix that. So your headphones we're good with. Grab your head control, open that up, and then let's play around with these. So profile sweep and back of head sweep I'm going to leave alone. But head sweep one, let's come in here, select both of our keys, and let's have that one happen a little bit sooner. Head sweep two, maybe a little bit later. Head sweep three, let's go later again. Head sweep four, let's pull that one back. Head sweep five, let's highlight those again. Pull that one back so it's happening a little bit sooner. And the key is we just don't want it happening so soon or so late that it's happening at a point that we don't like the way that it looks. So then you can come in and just change it a little bit if you don't like it. Um, that one, let's put it right in between there. A little bit early. Kind of putting it, putting it between those pieces just comp for composition sake. And then this last one, let's pull up just right in there. So it's happening a little bit later. So now I'm going to scrub through and those all kind of come through at different points. Now this one looks a little bit like it's not quite right. So let's pull that down a little more. So just avoiding that twinning. Okay, it looks like I don't have that happening anywhere else. Perfect. So they all come down kind of differently. Now, something interesting to think about. They're all coming from the top. So to try something slightly different, let's grab one of our head sweeps. Let's say head sweep seven. And you see we've got a key frame here on you know, these two spots. So if I'm in between, kind of just in the middle watching this happen, what happens if I come in here and I turn the end growth up to 100? You'll see now it's coming from the bottom. However, it goes from the top and disappears to the bottom. So how do we fix that? What we need to do is reverse the start and end points. So if we're starting with zero, we need to turn that up to 100, rekey it, come over here to where we have 100 and turn that down to zero and rekey again. So end growth is at 100 and then the start growth keyframes are reversed. So then what you get is basically a reverse of what it was looking at as that beginning point. And then we've got this awesome kind of coming up from the bottom and the top. So I want you to experiment with changing up maybe every other one of your sweeps with that method. So you've got um, them coming up from the bottom and coming down from the top. And it, it really just helps to get away from that twinning concept even further. So not only are they coming up at different rates, 
starting at different times, ending at different times, but they're coming in from different directions. So it really helps to randomize this and give it a lot more organic quality. Okay, so um, practice that in between uh, lessons. I'm going to do this on a few of the other ones just to get that overall look looking prettier. And then in our next lesson, we're going to be importing splines from Illustrator to kind of create a logo that's going to go along with this and kind of create that final look here on the side once the, these little sweeps kind of go away. What do we have to look at over here? So sticker coming from the top and some are coming from the bottom. So hopefully you followed along. If you didn't, um, w in, we did this in between lessons. So you can just grab 12 underscore begin in your project files if you want to get caught back up without having to go through and doing that by hand. Okay, so let's come in here and start doing some importing. So what I'm going to do is come over here to file and choose open. And we want to grab your reference files folder right here. And we're going to go into the legacy, the listenlegacy.ai. Now it's named legacy because when I was in Illustrator, I had to save this as an Illustrator uh, version 8. No other version will work for importing into Cinema 4D. So you got to grab version 8 or save as version 8 when you're in Illustrator or you won't be able to import it. So go ahead, select that and hit open. And it's going to ask you what scale. Just do it at 1. That's fine. And then it's going to bring it in to a separate Cinema 4D project. So I can rotate around, see everything that it's got here. Um, great. So I basically don't need to worry about that listen legacy null, but if you want to bring it in with that, that's totally fine. But before we get convoluted with all the other things we have going on in our other project, let's take a second to just kind of investigate this. And why are there three different paths? So we've got path one, which doesn't look like really anything is happening there. Um, if we uncheck those two path uh, path two and three, it actually looks like that's the whole thing. So I'm going to rename path one to just plain old listen. Okay. Now I'm going to uncheck that, check on path two, and with path two selected, it's the same thing. So I want path two to be a little bit different. What I want to happen is for this line to come out of the back of those headphones and come around and start riding on. So we're going to ride on, ride on, ride on till we get to this end. Now that part we have up at the top where we just have listen, that's all taken care of. But path two, I want to come out from wherever this end ends and sweep up and cross our T. And then path three, I want to be responsible for dotting our I. So that's why we kind of have this whole thing here, but I need to delete some points so that they're only responsible for those parts of it. So let's call path 2 T and we'll call path 3 I. Or you could even call it dot I or T cross or something like that. And we'll go into points mode and you want to grab your live selection. So I'm going to turn off everything basically and only have uh, listen turned on for now. Okay, so with listen selected, we know that that's everything we have here until it looks like about the end of this end. So I'm going to select everything after that in the spline by shift selecting making sure I don't grab anything I don't want, and then we'll delete those points. So now we only have to the end of the end. That's what listen takes care of. Now for the T. So I'll select the T, and we'll turn back off the listen, turn on the T, make sure the T is selected. Now it has everything. So I'm going to come in here, and we want to delete everything previous, and also after that part that we're looking for in the animation. So don't delete that point right there because we need it for our beginning. But if we delete everything previous to it and then also everything after this point where the T gets crossed, we should be in good shape. So delete that and um, we can actually grab this point. It looks like we missed it and we'll delete that one too. So now if I have turned on my T and my listen, see how it just moves to there. So I that's exactly what I want, just that little part of it. Now for the eye, it's kind of just con a continuation of that idea. So if I turn on the eye and I turn off the T and the L, 
what we should get is a continuation of that cross. Now it looks like we don't have it anymore. So um, that may just be that that never contained it. So what we can do instead is let's come up here and find where that does exist. So it existed before we deleted it for the T, which was only a few taps ago. So we'll just undo that, control Z a couple of times until we come back in here to the T with those points deleted. Okay, so we're right here. And what I'm going to do is just not add those parts after the T to my selection. Then we'll delete it again. We don't want that point. We don't want that point. Okay, so the T now contains part of the I that we need, which is fine. We'll get rid of it in a second. Then I'm just going to duplicate that T and we'll call it the I. And that I really never did any good for us, so we'll just delete that one. Okay, so the T and the I right now are identical. So what I'm going to do is we'll turn off the T, select the I, and we only want the I from that point where the T ends. So we'll just delete those. And so now the T needs to have the parts of the I deleted, so we'll delete those. Okay, so just took us a few extra clicks to get back to that point. So now we've got our listen, our T, and our I. So it's all those different parts of one line kind of separated now into three paths and those three paths are going to help us to sweep this word on in a way that looks really interesting. So select your listen legacy null now and hit control C to copy it. Then we're going to bring this over into your file that we had open at the beginning of the lesson. So go to window, choose 12 underscore begin and we'll just click anywhere over here and hit control V and it's going to paste that for us. Now, this is going to be really, really small because as you can see, it came in just super tiny. So we need to make this bigger. So I'm going to start kind of moving this over. Let's come over here. Um, let's just grab our scale tool and kind of scale this up where we can see this better. And I'm going to start needing to rotate this around here. So just like that. Now once it starts to look like it's kind of going the other way, that's when we know it's kind of gone too far. And we can line it up even with the profile of our head, which makes it easier. So grab your move tool. You might need to move out of your world mode and into your object mode now. Okay, so you can see how it's kind of parallel with the head and a little bit behind it. So that's what we're going for here. And let's just move into our last frame because this is where it's going to be necessary that this kind of fits in. And now let's just start kind of getting it into place. So I'm scaling it up a little bit, moving it over, just getting it into position. Okay. So that's looking good. Now let's come in here to our listen legacy and grab uh, the listen part of it, go into points mode, and let's start to kind of put this into position a little bit. So right now it just kind of goes off uh, and stops, but I actually want this to connect to the headphones. So what I'm going to do is kind of look at it top down here, move it up so it's parallel, um, or sideways rather, so it's parallel with this. And we'll move, move it over so it's just about to intersect like that. And we'll come in here and move it up just like that. So it should be pretty close to kind of in the middle of those headphones if you orbit around. Okay? Pretty good. All right, so let's play around a little bit so that that line doesn't look so rigid, just kind of going straight down. So probably what we should do here is either maybe try to move this point a little bit, which will probably actually get us pretty far. Just kind of playing around with getting that one sort of to be in the middle. And we can right click and choose soft interpolation to kind of smooth it out. You see how that did. It did snap us back into our camera position, but we can just move out of that camera mode for a moment. And then when we make clicks, it's not going to have that problem. Now you want to be careful when you're working with the handles and you're in perspective mode because it can really start to make things get crazy. 
So you want to orbit often and make sure that things aren't getting out of control. Let's select that point, go to soft interpolation on both of those points right there. And it looks like we're still not quite getting a nice little circle here. So we'll just add another point by right clicking, choosing create point, making another point right there and we'll push it down and over a little bit just like that. And you can change the interpolation to be soft on those again. Now if you're still having issues, this is still not looking quite right for you. You could try just deleting those points like that. And then you're just going to have one to deal with, which might allow you to soften it a little bit more. Okay. So I'm just kind of playing around with the way that it overlaps and being really careful not to overdo my Bezier handles and get them really far away. Let's take a look through our camera, see what it looks like. So we've got kind of this nice little line here. I'm going to move this up and over a little bit more. Maybe kind of pull those down a little bit so we get sort of a flattened out and then a kind of a swoosh down. Maybe you want to curve those a little bit more. Make sure they're not out of control by rotating around. Okay. And we can just scrub again. And you can see what that's going to look like. Great. Okay, so on the last frame, this is in place and it looks good. But before that, it looks like it's a little bit too high, kind of. So you can see how it just is sort of floating there. And then it moves down. Okay, so we know we don't have any keyframes on that. But what does have keyframes is our head. So what we need to do is grab that Listen Legacy and take it down here and place it underneath that head and headphones in the hierarchy. So it's going to move with it now. So you see how now it doesn't look like it's floating up anymore. It just is moving in relation to the background, which is perfect. That's what we want. Okay, so now really quickly, we can start to add a sweep to this. So let's just use one of our sweeps we used on our head. That'll be probably the easiest. So let's just grab that one right there that's that mint color to go along with our headphones. So I'm going to control drag that up in between the Listen Legacy. And um, let's just put this right above Listen open that up. We'll delete our spline too, place listen in there. And then let's see where do we want this to start uh, kind of streaking on here. So we've got it looks like can't really happen until the headphones are in place. So that's about right there. So we need to grab that first keyframe and place it there on the 423. And it also looks like it's drawing from the wrong direction. So let's grab that um, and take this back down so the end growth is at zero and we start with zero on the start growth also might have saved me a little bit of time if I would have double checked that um, to see where if it was one that I had reversed to come from the bottom and it looks a little bit thick with our circle so let's turn that thickness down it's right in there probably around 10 and one of the things you're going to notice is sometimes the interpolation that comes in from Illustrator is going to give you different results maybe than the interpolation that you would get if you drew it in here. So you see how I get this really kind of strange line on my T. So I'll show you how to fix that in a second here. But first let's grab our head sweep and come into our caps. And I don't want to have a fillet cap on this. I'm just going to turn it to just cap. Um, so that it's consistent and then we can go back into our circle and turn that back up so it's just all the same thickness throughout because it starts to just look a little bit strange okay so let's come in here and turn off our head sweep for a second 
and I'm going to show you what causes that weird point. So if I select my listen and I grab this T, you see how it's just one point that's creating a perfectly straight line. So that's what happens um, and all you have to do to fix that is come in here and choose soft interpolation with that point selected and you'll see how now instead of that line being um, just kind of perfectly straight like it was, it's created this loop-de-loop. -loop. Now that doesn't really look like a T anymore, so we can come in and kind of get them closer, but at least now it has some interpolation there so that when we turn back on our sweep, it doesn't have that super tight little point. Now other areas like this N have that same quality to them, but they're not sticking out so far that they look like a mistake. The N and this I here still look pretty good. Okay, so let's scrub through here. Looks like the headphones come into place and the listen begins to draw on then right about here we need for the listen maybe actually to come on a little bit later or maybe just last a little bit longer so that we can see it. it's interf being interfered with by all of these sweeps here so let's grab that head sweep and grab this keyframe pull it forward a little bit so kind of just right after 550 there there. So now it lasts a little bit longer. And now we need to key the N coming on. So we can do this pretty quickly and easily just by duplicating this head sweep. Um, let's rename this one to listen though, just to keep that straight. Then we'll duplicate by control dragging it down. Again, be careful if you have that open. You want to close it back up to duplicate it because sometimes that just messes you up. I renamed it to T, same name as our spline. So I'm going to delete the listen out, replace it with the T. And then with the T selected, the T sweep that is, we'll come in here. We know right about here where the N is ending, we'll want the, the N sweep to happen. So I'm gonna select both of those and grab this right on the end to kind of condense it down. So right as that ends, the second one comes on. So you see how that looks now? Great, maybe have it be a little bit shorter but also what I want to happen is I want it to start having the end following it about halfway through. So I'm going to zoom in on this just by grabbing that there. And if we have this happen over, you know, this might not be quite enough frames. Let's pull this forward a bit. So it's a little bit longer there. Okay, so the end right in here comes on. Let's make sure, oh, the start growth is set to one. Let's turn that down to zero and rekey just to make sure that we don't have anything out of the ordinary. Okay, so this comes up here and then right about halfway through, I want the end growth to start following it. So I'm gonna key the end growth at zero and then right about here, I want it to catch up with it. So I'm gonna turn this up are just right in there 51 and then when we come in here to the end I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more right in there so it's just kind of the cross of the T just right there so that's at 74 for me so I'll key that again so we've got four little keyframes that kind of cause that to swim through there now right whenever that end kind of hits just right in there I want the I to start so we'll do the same thing for the I just grab the T um, duplicate it there and we'll just fix that up really quick just with the naming. So the T is first and then the I. We'll select the T spline, delete it, replace the, it with the I. And then we've got the I coming in here. And we'll see if that's in the right spot. Looks like we might need a new, few more frames. Let's up this to about 650. So we've got a little bit more time to work with here. Then I'm just going to grab these and pull them to the end. Maybe condense them down a little bit since the I is a smaller thing happening here. And we'll get the T and then the I comes through to the end. But it looks like the I is actually a little bit um, bigger than, you see how that's too long there? So we'll just grab the I and increase that so it's just a small little dot right in there 90 it looks like so scrub through 
and we'll watch that draw on. Listen, T, I, and then we even have a little bit of time to just kind of read it, just a few frames there. Perfect. So now that we have the um, listen imported, swept on, everything's in place, we're going to start creating a background spline and sweep that's going to kind of be this other object taking up a little bit of room and just kind of causing some other things to be going on in the background before we get to this final spot. So stick around and we'll be just kind of fleshing out the whole composition with some more. I do want to have just a little bit more going on in the background, especially for this part right here, just so we have kind of something that sort of comes down and is back there and then quickly goes away. So the best way to do this, I think, would be to go into our right view and just kind of zoom back here and we'll just create it from sort of this perspective. So this is kind of what we're working with here. Very, very uh, similar. If we're not in our camera view, you can see kind of what this looks like. So if you're in your camera view, it's going to force you to be right here. But if you're out of your camera view, um, it'll just snap you back right there. Okay, so let's come in here with, let's do, let's do Bezier for this one. And I just want to kind of create some splines that will sort of come through here. Maybe create kind of a little loop in this area right there. Let's try that loop up higher. And then just sort of go down through that area. Maybe do another loop right here. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of work on this one's interpolation a little bit right there. And you can play around with the way that it interacts with your words. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's come out here to our main perspective view, see what we've got. Now, one of the things I like about this is that it just kind of places them all in the same plane when you're in that type of a view. So now if I go into model mode, I can just push it back, kind of rotate it around a little bit, and just have that be parallel with the head. You see? Perfect. Okay, so let's go back into our view here. And the only issue I have is that it might be over to the left a little bit far. So let's pull it back over here just a bit. Just so that we can still see it if there's any still coming through right there at the end, okay? So that looks pretty good. Now let's move out of our camera view for a moment. And I'm just going to really, really quickly kind of reposition a few of these points. So if I go into my point mode, I just want to grab a few and kind of pull them in and out so that they're not all on exactly the same plane. So we kind of get this nice little spiral look. just like that, okay? So you can see now from the top how it still looks pretty similar from the side, but if I rotate, we get that nice little parallax. So much better and is gonna cause less issues when we start to add sweeps, okay? So in the same way that we swept things before, when we were doing our main sweep, I'm gonna grab this spline, duplicate it, go into my model mode, slightly push it over, pull it up. And this time let's maybe just try a few less. So maybe just do three this time. And let's go back into our camera view. And we'll grab a sweep from the beginning. So that would be sweep one was actually the very first one that we had. So I'll just control drag that up there. 
And we'll come in here, grab spline one, delete it, place that spline underneath there. So now what we're gonna see, if we come to the very start and scrub around, is we start to see, whoop, there comes a spline down through there. Perfect. So it's just kind of a little one that we've got going in the background but it just sort of helps to flesh that area out and makes it feel like there's more happening behind the scenes. So I'm going to grab that sweep 1.4, pull this down, grab that spline, delete it. We'll replace it with the other one. And then this one, let's grab its keyframes. That's spline 1.5. Select all of these, and I'm going to have this happen just a little bit later so it's further up from it. And then let's fix its color or change its color a little bit. Let's make this one kind of that blue. Perfect. And then we'll do it one more time for our other spline. Grab your spline, delete it, replace with the new one. Let's make this one green. And we'll grab our keyframes and we'll make those happen just a little bit earlier, or excuse me, later. So it's earlier in the sweep itself. And you can't see it beforehand, which is good. Then it just kind of starts to come down through there in the background and is finishing out right as those pieces right here are finishing out, which is perfect because then the listen kind of comes through and it just really comes together nicely. Now, if you want to kind of play around with it a little bit further, you could grab all three of these, control drag down to duplicate them, and then just take their keyframes and pull them forward a little bit more, maybe condense them a little bit so it happens faster. So it's still going to be gone at that point, but you've just got a little bit more going on. And then you could come in here and again change their colors so you get more variety. So that navy one you could change to the mint. We haven't used the sky blue yet. And then either leave the last one green or maybe change it to navy since the very first one is green. You haven't seen a navy one in a minute. So then we'll pull down through there. And now that, that one just lingers a little bit longer. So right as the eye is being dotted, that one's going away. So maybe that extra movement kind of helps to lead your eye. Or if you feel like it's distracting, you don't have to pull it for quite so far forward. So maybe by the time that eye gets there, you've allowed them to just kind of relax and they're not looking at it anymore. Just like that. There's just more going on. There's more pieces at play. Okay, so that looks pretty good for our background sweeps there. We've just kind of got another little piece um, of the whole pie together just by adding that. And now that everything is kind of in place, I'm happy with the way that this looks overall. We'll be ready to start compositing um, and adding some object buffers and things like that in the next lesson. However, there is one thing that I want to fix just with a little bit of time we have left in this lesson. And that is right in this area here you can see those two parts of the headphones and you can see them when you really don't want to be able to see them we don't want to know they're just hanging out there we don't want to know about them until they are relevant to this animation here so you can see them kind of going across the screen there not what we're wanting so what I'm gonna do is we'll scrub backwards to about right here and let's take a look at those so I'm gonna grab this and we'll come down here to where we've got those pieces. That's going to be, let's see here, in the headphones part. So that's right there. And that's this low attach piece. So what you can do is in this basic tab, you've got visible and editor and visible and renderer. So you want to key these the same because if you just change visible and editor for it to look good to you here, it's still going to render differently. So what we want to happen is right before this keyframe on this uh, piece, we want it to become visible on its keyframe and be invisible the frame or so before it. So we don't see it when we're back there with the camera. So visible and editor on the frame where it begins will change this to on and the same for render. So they're both going to be turned on on that first keyframe or even we don't really see it the frame before that. Let's actually do it 
Let's do it right here on frame 344, just so that those keyframes aren't right on top of each other. And if we do need to move them or you need to know, it'll be easier that they're not overlapping. So I'll control click both of those to set those keys. And then I'm going to come to the frame right before that one and we're going to change it. So on this frame, it's going to be set to off. So we're basically doing a one frame change. Now you want to make sure you key those by control clicking. So on frame 343, they're off. On frame 344, they're on. And then on three, frame 346, they are going to start moving into view. So if I'm over here before that, that piece is no longer visible. So let's repeat the process for screw three, since that one is um, also giving us some trouble. So that one comes in right here on frame 321. So let's come in just like right there, frame 317, and we'll key this to be on in the editor and the render. So control click for both of those. And then we'll go to the frame before that and turn it off and control click both. And now if we come backwards, no longer visible. Perfect. Then they come into place and give ourselves enough room. We should be able to see them both. There we go. There's that other piece. Great. Okay. So if you want to change your timing or anything like that, now would be a good time to do it. Um, because pretty much from now on, we are not going to be uh, changing anything else besides things that have to do with rendering. So I'm pretty happy with the timing overall. If I hit just the play key and watch it, you're not watching it in perfect real time. It's a little bit slower, but you get the idea and you can see how things move. And so if you feel like anything's too slow, you could go in and change it. But I think it's r better for it to be a little bit too slow than too fast. So if you can't decide, I would err on that side because then at least you can read it. You can see what's going on. But overall, I think it's really nice for it to actually be a little bit slower um, and build a little bit of anticipation for what is coming next. What are all of these sweeps and splines leading to? So um, one thing that you'll notice as this plays through is that um, those little dots are going to change um, because if you are, you can key this basically from that basic tab. So if you notice that they're off, you think, oh, I need to turn them back on. Don't worry about it. That's what we just keyed. So those are related right there. Okay. Those little stoplights. So depending on whether you're earlier or later in the timeline, you can see how they change depending on if I'm on or off of that keyframe. Okay. So keep that in mind. Don't worry about that if you notice it. Now, one thing we do want to make sure is turned off is the head. Right now the head is only turned off in the editor, not in the renderer. So I'm going to turn it off there too because we don't want that silver head showing up and ruining our final render. That's what it would look like if it rendered. So I'm going to turn it off, both renderer and editor. Okay, that should be everything for now. We'll come back in the next lesson and we're going to set up an object buffer and start rendering.